Most people are in danger of losing everything. So you need to stop spending money right now. There's no big secret. We've all seen the news reports. I know you already know, watching the news and everything else, that inflation is over 7% at this point. And if you're looking at goods and services, I talk about that in my previous videos about how inflation is causing everything that we pay for to go up, including labor. Just recently, as you know, the 99 cent store, the dollar store has raised it above a dollar. You're paying more for Netflix. You're paying more for a hamburger. Everything is going up. While the Fed thinks that this is just temporary, some of the wealthiest people in the world, the top investors of the world, think that this is not just transitory, but this is permanent, meaning that's here to stay. So we have to adjust are spending almost immediately. People have gotten raises. Inflation is actually outpacing the raises that most people are getting. So why not look at our savings as a way to go ahead and combat this? And I'm gonna share with you some vital ways that you can start to emulate what the top investors are doing out there. So the top investors are looking at four critical areas where they're gonna be investing their money. Number one is real estate. Whether you want multifamily or single family, residential real estate, even though the interest rate is going up, up slowly and steadily, it's still a great buy because we have a massive housing shortage. You can also stick your money into industrial real estate and some aspects of commercial. It takes a long time to get expertise, but the best time to start is as soon as you can. Start to save up your money and buy things that are going to appreciate over time. And a lot of top investors are putting it into REITs and funds and stuff like that. The other area is that they're putting their money into tried and true companies, mostly companies like Apple with a humongous market capitalization or it's worth a whole lot of money. You've got your Meta, AKA Facebook and Tesla and some of the older companies as well, like the Fords and the Hyatt Hotels. And they're also putting their money into tried and true companies from the past as well that have a historical record of outperforming and always going up in value. They're also putting their money into green energy, renewable energy, and also renewable power. Companies like Tesla that have harnessed the battery powers, companies that are doing great for solar and doing great in those renewable or green energy sources because let's face it, it's only going to be a bigger industry, not a smaller industry. And now I have to kind of mention this, and a lot of people are on the fence about crypto, but some of the largest investors, and yes, they're sending out tweets, they're shaking the market up, they're doing uh, all type of things like pump and dumps and stuff like that, but a lot of the top investors are starting to put their money more and more into crypto. You might not like it, you might not understand it, you might just think that it's a flash in the pan but because the amount of money that's going into crypto it's most likely here to stay now the valuations might fluctuate but that's where they are putting their money the wealthiest investors and the wealthiest people out there are basically prepping right we've all watched those shows like doomsday preppers they're getting organized and they're understanding how the markets are going to flow while nobody knows exactly how these things are going to work out because in essence every market the real estate market Market, the stock market, the commodities market, however you want to look at it, is all fueled by the dynamics of our own human behavior. Scared human beings react a certain way. Joyful human beings react a certain way. Sad human beings react a certain way. Because we operate like a herd, all of that dictates how these markets are impacted by our own behavior. Simple thing, right? A few people start to get frightened about some news and then you start to see that almost riotous behavior in human beings. So a lot of investors are predicting what's called a bear market, where the market valuation overall is going to go downward. Now, if it acts like a bear, smells like a bear, probably a bear, right? So a lot of people are thinking, because these markets have all gone up, especially the real estate and the stock market, because of patterns of behavior, it should recycle back downward. If you are expecting that, depending on where in the market and your investment investment game is like mine, to stay in, buy and hold, then you're gonna be perfectly fine. If you're speculating, like I'm gonna buy X 
amount of Ethereum or X amount of crypto or Bitcoin and I'm gonna sell it tomorrow, essentially day trading or like I like to call it gambling, then all of these things can be filled with valuations up or down. So make sure that if you do go down these roads, make sure that you're conscious about the fact that you could lose money and that's based on your own risk tolerance. I understand it takes some amount of risk to grow. You don't wanna take your entire nest egg and put it into something that someone whispered about one day and then end up losing everything. So some of the reasons why people are thinking that the market's going to crash is that the NASDAQ Composite Index, which has 3,000 companies in it, 36% of those companies, some of the biggest companies in the world, have seen a valuation drop up to 50% sometimes. So all of those key indicators, while they can tell you what's about to happen, we human beings are always unpredictable. So to hedge against all this, I'll give you a couple of insights. Number one, no matter where the market is going, up market, down market, real estate market, stock market, you always can find opportunities of undervalued companies, undervalued homes. If your intention is to keep it a long time, you're gonna be fine. Sometimes, if if you gamble and you're gonna sell it right away, sometimes you always play that game of I should have held on to that property or should have held on to those coins a little bit longer, I'd be worth X, Y, Z. So you wanna have an approach of just understanding the actual opportunities that are in the market. And you can't really do that unless you're studying the marketplace. You have to get in the habit of saving your money so that you can invest. Now, I always get some of these comments, well, I don't have any money. It's hard for me because I'm living paycheck to paycheck and I've got kids and groceries and all these things and you want me to invest, I just don't have the money to do it. If you do it the right way, you can save, you can invest, invest and you can maintain a certain amount of lifestyle that suits you and makes you happy as well. If you enjoy the content, go ahead and hit that like button and we'll see you soon.